Got another bunch of questions for the alcohols playlists. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And a huge thank you to each and every one of you who've already liked, subscribed or commented on any of my other videos. It really is hugely appreciated. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so we'll make a start with the multiple choice questions. So all of the options have got six carbons and two oxygens, so it's down to the number of hydrogens. So we've got three hydrogens here, one there, one there, three there, one there, three there. So the total's 12, so the answer was C. Moving on to the next question. So when you dehydrate an alcohol, you take the OH group, and hydrogen from an adjacent carbon. You can't get EZ stereoisomers from a 1-ol because it's gonna put the double bond at the end of the chain where you'll have two hydrogens bonded to that end carbon. So that leaves us with A and C as our options. So we'll have a closer look at them now. So starting with A, pent and 3 ol so we take the OH group obviously, and we can take an H off here or an H off here. Now that's gonna to lead to the same alkene we're getting pentuene, obviously in water. Now this can show EZ stereoisomerism because on this carbon of the double bond, you've got an H and a CH3, so they're different. And on this carbon of the double bond, you've got an H and a C2H5 group. So they're different as well. So A is the answer. So we'll still look at C anyway for revision purposes. So we've got to take this OH off here. Adjacent carbons, this one, this one, and this one. You take the hydrogen of this or this, it's going to generate a double bond here or here and lead to the same alkene. So it's going to be 2-methylbutonene. That can't show EZ stereoisomerism because you've got two H's on that carbon there. If you take the H of this one instead, you'll get the double bond there. This one can't show EZ either because you've got two methyl groups now on this carbon. So definitely A. And the next question, which alcohol is not likely to have a fragment ion at M over Z 43 in the mass spectrum? Well, we've got to think about, well, what could cause that fragment? So it's down to a C387 plus ion. So which of these won't show that? So the answer is the first one. I'll just, you can see I've highlighted the C387 part of the other three. Less easy to see that one, but it is C387. So moving on to the last of the multiple choice questions, you'll notice I've highlighted the word reflux. That's really important for this question. So just a quick recap, when you oxidize an alcohol under reflux, if it's primary, you'll get both oxidation. So you'll go to the aldehyde, then to the carboxylic acid. If it's a secondary alcohol, you can only oxidize them once to a ketone and tertiary alcohols, remember, cannot be oxidized. So with that in mind, let's look at this infrared spectrum. So we've got one key absorption, and it's this one here. That's due to the C double bond O. So what that means is this must be a ketone. If it was a carboxylic acid, you'd have a broad absorption around here. So we haven't got that. So this is a ketone, which means alcohol A must be a secondary alcohol. So running through the four alcohols, A is tertiary, because the OH carbon is bonded to one, two, three carbons directly. Remember, that's not oxidized. It's not that one. It's the secondary alcohol, two carbons directly bonded to the OH carbon. So this will give a ketone. That's the answer. These are both primary alcohols, so they would be um, oxidized under reflux to carboxylic acids. Moving on to the main question now. So we've got an unsaturated alcohol with five carbon atoms. We've got to just do the equation for complete combustion. Now, there's so many options available here for this. I'm just going to go for a straight chain alcohol, five carbons, one double bond. The important thing to remember, obviously, is with complete combustion, you get carbon dioxide and water produced. Part B, why is ethanol soluble in water? So your classic diagram where you show the dipole across the OH bond and the dipole in the water. You've got to show the lone pairs on the oxygen and you've got to draw a dotted line from the lone pair on an oxygen to the delta positive hydrogen on a neighboring molecule. So obviously these are hydrogen bonds. So ethanol is soluble in water because it can form hydrogen bonds with the H2O.
Next part, comparing the solubility of hexane-1-ol and hexane-1-6-diol. So I've drawn both the molecules up there, and you can clearly see you've got two hydroxyl groups in the diol, whereas only one in hexane-1-ol. So basically, this can form more hydrogen bonds than this, so it's more soluble. Moving on to the flow chart now, so compound K is a secondary alcohol, so what's reduced to a secondary alcohol, it's a ketone. So the carbonyl compound must be that there. What's the reagent that brings that change about? It's NaBH4. Move across to the right now, so what's going to be reacting with compound K when you have this combination of sodium bromide and sulfuric acid. It's actually HBr that's reacting. So we're going to get a substitution reaction taking place where the OH group will be substituted by that bromine there. Moving on to the final reaction, the acid catalyst in heat. That's going to act as a dehydrating agent and it's going to eliminate H2O from compound K. So a bit like we said in the multiple choice section, we take the OH and we take an H from an adjacent carbon. So we can take an H from here, that'll put a double bond there, or we can take an H from here, that'll put a double bond there. And the next part, what's the name of compound K? So we've got cyclohexanol effectively with a methyl group on carbon one, two, three. So 3-methylcyclohexanol is the name. You could have said cyclohexan one all there if you wanted to, but there was no need for that. And moving on to the final part of the question, so it looks like you've got to write loads of stuff here. You absolutely don't. So you can do a really simple answer and still get all the marks. So the first thing I'm going to say is what the oxidizing agent is. So that's a mixture of potassium dichromate 6 and sulfuric acid. So the first reaction we'll look at is when you oxidise by distillation. So distillation, remember, produces the aldehyde, which in this case is going to be butanol. And I'm covering both of these bullet points here with this equation. So we'll just do exactly the same for the other type of oxidation, which is, of course, reflux, produces a carboxylic acid, in this case butanoic acid. And there's the equation there. Remember, two moles of oxidising agent needed now but we only get one mole of H2O. The water's formed in that first oxidation.